Good morning and welcome to our monthly webcast. I am Samir Mehta, your moderator. This is FCL. session number 173. FCL. Huh? I am sure uh, you would have noticed our one-off change today. For the first time, uh, we are not doing uh, a case on the third Tuesday. And uh, uh, after this session, we will resume back uh, with that uh, schedule. Uh, we have an uh, angulated, bifurcated, tortuous, calcified lesion, uh, almost as complex as the one you saw last month. And uh, it would be an excellent revision to have two almost uh, similar and challenging cases. Uh, uh, all the time, uh, our uh, largest audience is from India, of course, uh, adding also from Pakistan. And any beginning of any session without uh, talking a moment about India's dazzling performance at the Cricket World <laughs> Cup would be absolutely a mess. Uh, so great work, uh, Team India, and good luck. And uh, I think we have a great shot at winning uh, the World Cup. Uh, Samin, uh, Anu, good morning. Uh, very similar case to last month. Yeah. So this is both for complexity and angulation point of view, absolutely. And... Uh, Good morning to our all uh, our CCC live viewers with the entire global audience, and uh, we to continue to show sheet? more tip, uh, difficult cases and uh, uh, interventional point of view. And uh, as you see, that we always try to use a long sheath in a complex case. There were long sheaths used here, so and then why people we say that why use the long sheath because it gives you the guide performance uh, more steady. Uh, so usually, uh, this is what, uh, 35, what, what sheets we had? 25. So this is 45? Yeah. Yeah. So, so we'll use a longer sheet uh, because uh, uh, if I present, uh, I actually have the pictures from the last time uh, in terms of complexity while we are getting ready with the sheet. Uh, let's say the show, our uh, slides meanwhile. And so the rest mean, of the uh, staff, actually, you can uh, see. Along with the long sheath, are you also using a seven French guide? That is correct. Yes, okay. because of the bifurcation case with the mini crush, as we announced, uh, you're going to use a bifurcation wow. um, bifurcation case uh, with the two stents, and that's why it's seven French. Uh, and the rest of the staff and fellows, and uh, you see the, all the familiar faces, uh, myself and uh, Anu welcome our audience. These are our supporters. There are a lot of changes happening. You see the CSI becoming Abbott, Johnson Johnson has taken Abiomed, uh, Cardio became Hemonetics and Assist, so many of them, they continue to support and we are thankful to them. Uh, disclosures are about the same. And uh, this is a case number 173, a 69-year-old female who has some uh, other medical risk factors of cerebral palsy, meningitis, lim limited ambulation, uh, uses wheelchair, uh, and uh, presented first time with angina class three and positive stress test for enteroceptor inferior ischemia. No other cardiac history before, no valve problem, no EF, almost no medication, except little beta blockers. Uh, but that to more so for the neurologic point of view. Then cath vessel disease with a calcific subtotal of the mid LED with tortuous 90% D2 bifurcation, 111, 95% CERC, OM and 90-95% uh, non-dominant RCA with syntax score of 20 and EF of 60%. So patient that time underwent PCI of uh, the OM, did well, clopidogrel, torvastatin, metaprolol added, and this is where the angiogram was. So this is the case, as you can see here, the disease in that OM uh, and complex disease on the top, uh, LED bifurcation. You see there, LED is slowly filling, angulated bifurcation, uh, so that time, balloon uh, and stent, not a calcific lesion of the OM done post-dilated and finally, excellent angiographic result. But look at the, we want to concentrate everyone on the top of it uh, at 12 o'clock when there is a calcific proximal LED and that bifurcation with the angulation of uh, the diagonal, which doesn't see much here because we have to show you with the angiogram, which we are going to take now. And EF is normal, as I mentioned. So now we went through actually FCL, our VL guides, but VL guide didn't fit in. It kept, kept going into the circumflex, even the shorter one. And uh, so now we are with the FCL uh, 3.5. Yes. Yeah, FCL 3.5.
So FCL actually used to like quite a bit, but we learned that over time, the VL really gives a good support. Uh, and uh, so I used to, I'm still very big fan of FCL, but not too many people use FCL. Uh, even in my lab here, fellows are very concerned, require little manipulation yeah. of the catheter to engage. And uh, so that's why. Huh? FL3O. Um, Going in the circ. Yeah, it's still, even this is 3.5 going to the circumflex. Yeah. It is an Very extra true. short tubing. Why? Used to you have, have longer FL guide? No, FL will go, give you no support. I know, but what can you do? Very Question is, that, do you want to go to VL3O? No, not. It's such a short... Uh... Yeah. So, so there you can make little counterclock turn to get into the LED. Some die? Yeah. So we can see if the... Yeah, oh, let's take yeah. one picture here. That's and much after better. the wire we can yeah, after the wire we can always advance. Yeah, good. So you take a piston now. Same die, just go to Sine. Uh, you need a little AP cranial, there's full overlap. No, no. I mean you want to wire this way. Yeah, no, no, this yeah. is good. You we can no, but get AP cranial. No, no, no. Uh, and then fielder fine cross. I mean, not much yeah. calcification, is there? No, yeah, there is. There. It's actually proximal. There is. Yeah, it, you're right. Yeah, proximal, no, you're right. there is. At the lesion, probably not. Uh, it's a proximal only. See that? Uh, so moderate calcium, proximally, but definitely not. Now we're seeing it a little better now. There's not much in the LED diagonal system. And as you know, sir, sister, symptoms are also a little more uh, uh, kind of new. It's not a patient with I mean, a chronic this... stable disease. This is almost like the STEMI lesions I do. Uh, you know, it uh, <laughs> has that appearance. Uh, but let's let's see. You want to so this, I happening? think this this guide will work, and I think your suggestion that use the guide wire to pull in the guide uh, yeah. will should should uh, provide support. And, uh, and and sometimes you know very difficult to engage. Let's say the Rima or Lima. You can engage with a diagnostic catheter, and now you try with the guide catheter has a smaller tip. And they cannot engage. So what you basically do is put your exchange length wire into the Rima Lima and then advance on the exchange length wire carefully your guide catheter. So exchange to the guide catheter from the diagnostic catheter by using the uh, 300 uh, centimeter wire. Yeah, it's still very much overlap, but that's okay. We'll take a little better picture once we engage there. What is the EDP? Normal, normal EDP. Gives a lot of fluids. Then. Yeah, gives them fluid bolus. Yeah. yeah. There's a problem with that. Okay. And here uh, we are two of uh, our fellows, Tasif Dar and Frank Kalaba. And RN are our Elena and Will, CVT Asif and Habib, and imaging is Kiski. So all, as with the Broadway show, I have everyone taken their position. Congratulations also to Kiski for a major uh, publication. Beautiful, yes. With, uh, with simultaneous, uh, I think it was in a JCC publication, he told me, but... Yep, and many, yes. And many other uh, prominent publications and uh, the New York Valve meeting also coming up. So, yes. a lot of exciting things happening at the hospital. Yes. So, particularly the lay, uh, in the late-breaking trial and simultaneous publication, one was in circulation with a short DAP, uh, uh, of uh, combining uh, uh, of uh, the from the twilight uh, and tico trial and uh, take a picture now but yeah. apicranial you need a little apicranial not apicranial so overlap here now somehow this tubing is short can we get a longer tubing yeah let's take a longer tubing is this the run through wire uh, what what wire so right now it's a fielder it's a fielder fielder, fielder, fielder xt yeah. xt okay yeah. No, no. Regular, no, regular, fielder. regular fielder. Regular yeah. fielder. Yeah. All Go. right. Okay, ready? My, yeah. my, my starting wire for this is a whisper. Okay. And see, there is a retrograde brisk collaterals uh, from various branches of that uh, distal uh, dominant circ, the PDA and uh, postrolateral giving to the apical LAD. Right now, our equipment is closing that vessel, so we cannot see much distally. 
and this is probably going into the diagonal which was very angulated i think you have to take a probably will require a little stiffer wire yeah get me the miracle 6 let's take oh this is good bring this you can take a picture there okay okay but do you want to bring back no, your equipment i did i did it's going to full okay yeah now yeah so now you see a little better see that calcium proximally but at the site no and they, those are the bifurcating subtotal lesion led and the angulated diagonal that's where we are now also get the mongo ready okay okay so tell us what so is your next know, strategy miracle six so fielder clearly did not making turns you need a little uh, stiffer get a miracle six no i don't know Good. stiffer or your now you can bring your uh, yeah that's where it was little further yeah, it looks to be going to the diagonal yeah no even there it's not making mm. a turn it's, yeah not making easy turn okay now now some die okay there you are through the lesion into a septal there but i think across yeah it's a very tortuous there Should we open the shirt? Okay. Yeah. So now we... Mm -hmm. I think that's probably with the way LED is going up. Yeah, but as then go down. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Get me our 300 run through, right? Yeah. So which is which wire uh, crossed? Fielder. It will remain the same. Okay. Fielder, yeah. You didn't change it at all. I thought uh, you had uh, asked for the right. miracle. Right. Yeah, we had miracle, but more important, okay. I was going to otherwise use a Mongo wire so that it can yeah. make a quick turn. So if, essentially, if you see that you have tight lesion, then little uh, aneurysmal pouch. It's like a small pouch. You have DAG originating and then LED turns down, yeah. So you should always try to use uh, polymer jacketed hydrophilic wires in this. So now since we cross, we are going to go with the 300 wire. Okay, let's get a... Um, the 2.5 balloon looks like not a calcium. Yes. You want to do? Uh, I think open with a balloon. Then we do IO imaging if you need to be. 2.520 or 15 high pressure. Give us. Yeah. Okay. Here. Only. Pro I don't know why is that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now. now we are in the apex. I think it's going back to the collateral. Yeah, remember that's going up. That's the way collateral was. Okay, keep going. Uh -oh. mm. I know, going to the septals. Okay, come out, come out. Mm -hmm. I think once you open the legion, it will be easier. So now question comes here. That do you, you have to open the legion before you try the circ. Diagonal. I mean the diagonal. Yeah, even diag is not easy. Yeah. There. Okay, let's open yeah. the LED. Yeah. So the risk of losing diag, we have a risk of losing the diag, but that's okay. What size is this? 2.5. So it's a 2.5 non-compliant, and then we have the fielder wire ready to go back into the diagonal. Dilating. Okay, down. You have to pull back a little yeah. bit. 16. Okay, go up here. Yeah. You have to, down. Yeah. You have to go a little yeah, slow. Yeah. 
and anytime with the watermelon you have to go slow and of course you can always use the non you know the cutting balloons and so oh uh, yeah this is the one and then once you stabilize there then you go to high pressure 16 okay ready yeah see to believe it mm could be a pseudo lesion no, district no mm -hmm. could that be a pseudo lesion let's dilate a little bit there but remember it was very tortuous no. yeah here Good. low pressure I think you're right, okay good and let's give a little nitro and verapamil yeah good and let's get into the diagonal now Get the fielder wire again. Yep. Hmm, there was disease there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, see, this is the picture now, and step, bring it up. So you want to put a 38, 25? Yeah, uh, 275. No, no, distal is not 275. Okay, 2.538, we can always enlarge the vessel, the stent after. You want another picture? No, the floor, we will continue there. So now we are trying to wire the diag, same fielder wire that we used. And the diagonal also looks to be a pretty large vessel. Yeah. Yeah, guide is out. We have to advance the guide to see. Now we have our other. Uh, mm. oh. Good. Some die now. No. That's also very tortuous. Now yes. let's bring the guide in so we can take a better picture. Okay. Wire came out. Uh. Good. That's the way it is. Yep. Okay, okay no, in. put the LED wire a little further down so we can see the lesions. And remember, when you take a picture, the radio opaque portion of the wire should be further away from the lesion. You'll no never be able to see the lesion characteristics and so. We yeah. are still not, uh, okay, take Hello. a picture. Yeah, please. take a picture, yeah. Looking good. Yeah, so I think a lot of them was spasm and so we use the same 2.5 balloon for the diagonal, get that back. Yeah. And then let's have a strategy plan. Give me a run through wire, the other run through. Because? This 300 oh. wire is too no, much. No, we'll cut it. We'll cut now. No need to cut. It yeah. cuts, then okay. advancing stuff is better. You yeah. have run through regular? Yeah. Okay. But let's do this first. Let's dilate the diagonal. Play the last one. So will be a 2525? Uh, I would say 2.5 for the diagonal, 2.75 for the LED now. Okay. LED is plumping yeah, up. Big. Yeah. 27538 and 2.512. Now, you see the proximal LED at the level of the calcium, we are leaving it alone. Okay. No, that will decide on the IVAS. Mm. Sure. Uh, based on the IVAS, if the lumen less than 4, then we'll use IVL and uh, put a stand there. Sure. Oh, no. Yeah, that is looking yeah. uh, severe. Uh, now, yeah. Because there is more anti grade flow. And I'll cut the dive with no the. Need, the no, need. Not, no need to cut. Yeah. Maybe. I'm the cut master. That's okay. So all the 300 wire, I can make it a monorail wire quickly. Go. Remove it. This guy. 
I should not understand how to do that. Get a new one. This is the thing about we can get a 2012 compliant first. Yeah, but the, the very angulated, it will not go. Leave it, leave it, leave it. No, no, that's not the thing. Finally, wire got. So, 2012 compliant balloon. Get me the pink wait. euphora, right? No, what I would do, get a regular run through. Also, the wire has been twist turned. Yes. Let me just use the regular run through for the main high crisis. You have the new balloon? Mm -hmm. We're ready with that. My question is, mm. you have very nice wire distally. You don't go through the multiple channels or anywhere that's okay. So basically, the control of the non-exchange length wire is better. So that's what uh, a new changing there. And we'll take that exchange length wire out. But let's open the, advance the diagonal wire a little more. This is better now, right? I'll take this wire more. Yeah. Good. Okay, we're taking it out. So made a nice curve. So Some there is the a... wires, you see that? They keep coming back, keep coming back. Yeah. We are tortuous. Vessel so tortuous. Yeah. So there is a question, uh, uh, more more rather that a comment, uh, no plans of using rotational ablation for this lesion. No. So question was, the, that we did not... say. No. You have actually very interesting that the, the observer who is calling that really understood, read our uh, announcement of the e-blast. So we did say rotation attract me, but it turns out to be now with a better picture, the calcium is way before the lesion, not at the level of the lesion. So there is no plan for rotation attract me now. Now proximal segment, because of that short uh, and uh, it's still about 60-70%, this is the ideal case. I would say where you use a IVL. Okay, go. Uh, so if necessary, that if you had to do a stent of the proximal, uh, we'll go with the IVL now, probably not a rotation attract me. And you will so use the the plan. imaging to guide that. Right, if need to be. Although it is looking more now, it was not there. For, you need a non-compliant now, or go up here. Yeah, yeah, this I is the two compliant. Mm. Twenty atmosphere. I think yeah, will be the okay. The way it's coming out is yeah. it a lesion or is it a vessel? The and, is too tortuosity. Big. No, it's a tortuosity. It pushes it out. Let's go even slow. Yeah, kept it same way. It was moving other side. Okay, down. Yeah, sixteen. So what size you want? Good. 2.5? 2.5 is good. No, too big, I think. Go up. Okay. okay, get us the stand sizes. 2.75, 38. Yeah. Down. And 2.5, 12. Or you want 2.25? No, I think 2.5, 12 is okay. Take a picture. You take the picture? Big. Oh, and take another picture. Okay. Longer. 2.25. Okay. 2.25, 18. No. This is yeah. Promise, right? Zines. What did we No, no. Zion. 2.25, 18. Zions and uh, uh, 2.75, 38. And this is uh, going yeah. to Dr. Chanchal Saha. Please uh, ah. write your question again. Uh, it did not come through to us. Okay. So our plan as was the mini crush, only we aborted uh, rotation me because of no calcium, uh, angiographic calcium. And that's what we decide based on that. Yeah. We started the level of the septal. 
Ja, that's fine. Okay, diagonal has been dilated with a 2020 atmosphere and uh, we're putting a 2.25. The wire keep coming back. <laughs> no, the other one. Yeah, good. So, white one. Side yes. branch is always the white. White. Good. Leave it. Okay, let's bring the other stand. And I think we can take our vote from our pen, the audience, that they do they think proximal LED lesion is significant. And they can look at this angiogram. Yeah. Angio means the lumen, uh, the lumen will be less than, MLA will be uh, less than 4 millimeters square. Proximal. I bet it will be. Well, I... I have a feeling it is, and uh, besides, I think uh, just the location of the proximal LED would... Uh... The diagonal will extend further in, yeah. No, right now our stent will go further down. Right. Because there is a lot of disease there, so we'll go at the from septal. So that area, which is angiographically tight, uh, looks uh, 60 to 80 percent. We are not going to put a stent there at present, because this stent but... is going to go further, yeah. But it is exactly for this maneuver that you had a long sheath and a yeah, yeah. guiding catheter needed to be optimized. Sometimes. Good, no? Good. Okay. Yeah. With the okay. So, Doc, same. Yeah. Ready? Dr. Yes, Samson Not Alu. Yeah. Samson, let us know where you are writing okay. from. And uh, I'm quoting him, Anu. A great display of skills as always. The proximal LED already looking that it will need to be taken care of. Okay. Good. We like it. Okay. Some die and then we take the picture. You are able to see the maneuver that we got the LED stent in, right? Okay. Good. Okay. Now we take the wire out, leave it in the guide because we are going to recross. Okay. And ready? Some die, some die. I wanted to make sure LED is okay. Yeah. Yeah, good. That was our plan. We'll go 12 atmosphere yeah, because distal vessel still is just 2.5. Uh, Proximal is 2.75. So let's go to 12 atmosphere. Let it open by itself. Leave the 10, 20 seconds. Negative. And we do one more. Sharpen your IVAS. Actually, imaging, uh, you know, of course, we have done all our life uh, excellent results, short and long term, with the, you take them out, yeah, uh, without imaging or very minimal imaging. But now, in this day and age, and particularly so many trials coming so positive, which we showed uh, last time, uh, three of them uh, this year, uh, in various types of complex intervention, or three and a half. I'll say lumen is also not completely negative because stent thrombosis was lower. Mm -hmm. So in that way, but uh, for the long-term maze point of view was negative, uh, the target vessel failure. But key is that I renovate PCI, positive. October trial, positive. So many of them are telling us, and they actually, there is a big push from ACC, also fellows teaching on the imaging. So I think we had to re rethinking our issue. Okay, now let's see all the wire. No, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, take a picture now. You want to give a little nitro? One second. Again. Good. You think the same two balloon will go? Yeah, yeah. Get a two balloon cleaned. Yeah, yeah you, uh, let's use the same balloon. Same balloon. Clean it. Yeah. Same balloon, same wire. This is the same, our fielder wire. Good. So. And you want a 3O, right? Do we have a 3O balloon? Yeah. 
Three or fifteen, huh? Yep. Right? Yeah. Enough. Yeah. High pressure. Yep. Looking Not very good already. Yes. Very nice. Uh, little over overlap uh, many time we see this jumbled up too much metal at the bifurcation means there were too much crush there's a real mini crush but it still will not go question is two things whether anchor or you rewire in this situation first. i think the way the wire went is very good so okay just sort of anchor okay let's get Get a three o balloon. The three o balloon. Yep. Once again, a very observant audience. They want you to demonstrate the anchoring technique. Yep. Can you show the video of the anchoring technique? The app video of the anchoring technique. Philippe. Okay. Now be careful here. It's not three. Yeah. Gentle. So just keep it nearby. Don't go that far. No, I cannot go. And Good. also I have a new two o yeah. balloon ready. Yeah. This is used. Okay. Maybe a trouble. Okay, I'm going yeah. up now. Uh, uh, uh. Remember, you cannot have it there. Yeah, good. Okay, go. Okay, we are going low pressure here, about eight. Good. Don't open. Yeah. Have it ready. Okay, good. Yeah. Going slowly. Yeah. Good. I think it's a nice demonstration. You saw that? Excellent the demonstration. We are going to show the, yeah. And Is the, the video Samin... playing? Yeah, let's yeah, pull back. No, Sorry. we don't have the video yet. But uh, Samin, I want to read to you a very relevant yeah. and uh, very intelligent question. This is coming ah. from Dr. Hafiz Go Hassan. Go again. And uh, Dr. Hassan, thank you so much. I'm going to read the question as it is any particular choice of stent in mother vessel to allow a to allow better no, chance down. of recrossing yeah. into side branch. Is yeah. synergy better due to widened struts? Yeah. Excellent observation and question, Hafiz. Yeah, so very good point. So we remember we have published that, that we did not find any difference in the current stent wow. generation. That whether which one you use, actually anecdotally, we have seen more Down. side branch closure Down. with the, uh, or more difficulty to go into the side branch. Promos actually has been the best. I don't know what you say, the to get to the side branch. Don't ask me, I, I always like the Promos stent. Yeah. But promise will be gone now. Leave it there. Yeah. Let's come back. Promise is bye bye. So in they'll fact, stop uh, making the promise. Will all will be synergy. Based on my experience, synergy good. actually is not. Synergy is good. No. Yeah, because I'm saying our experience is also not good for the synergy. You go, oh. twenty. And I'm that's at twelve uh, with the three. Yeah. yeah go in the meantime, our viewers yeah. can watch the anchoring yeah. uh, as yeah. demonstrated in the. Negative. Video. And yeah. the illustration from the app. That's app and they saw it physical anchoring anyway. Okay, good, right? Yeah, yeah, done. I'm going to remove the side branch wire. Yeah. And yeah. then we do the IBIS. Right. You want to take a picture before okay. I remove it? Okay, good. Well, the proximal lesion is uh, angiographically looking more and more significant. <laughs> okay, ready with the IBIS. Sure. But the purpose of the LED dial bifurcation with angulation has been achieved. Now we are going to the proximal. And we decide based on the lumen and degree of calcification. So side wire has been removed. And you saw it before putting a stent in the main vessel. With a mini crush, you have to remove the wire. That's what was done. We do IBIS. Okay, good. Flush, you okay. flush, right? Mm. Okay. Come closer. Actually, in this case, based on the October trial, could have been OCT case. Mm -hmm. But then uh, other studies like Renovate uh, uh, PCI, uh, there was 75% IBIS done and there were uh, also 25% okay, uh, okay, bifurcation lesions. Uh, so yes. this uh, native vessel, it's coming. 
very small vessel. Make, make it on the main screen now. Yeah. Nope. The eye was on the main screen, please. Yeah, this is the distal edge of the stand. Yeah, it looks good. No malaposition, no dissection. Yeah, we'll expand it. It's a long stand. Yeah, like circle shape because there's no calcium behind the stand. Here's kind of eccentric. This is still after the bifurcation. No, no, let's look there. Are yeah. you at the level of the crush now? Reaching, reaching. Yeah. Yeah, now I see it from yes. the three o'clock. This is by fact, yeah, looks like the branch is open. Yeah, now lumen is getting bigger. Yeah, so, yeah, now it's a native lesion, like eccentric crossfire lesion. And she will soon, we'll have an angio, yeah. uh, I was co, co registration, which we have for OCT. Yeah, yeah. so this is the lumen. Yeah, he's so tight. Like where the, are we now? 180 to 270 calcium. Yeah, and this is a good landing zone of the proximal lady. And how, what is the calcium arc? Like 180 to 270, like two to three quadrants. <clears throat> I think more of a two quadrant, but more important, give us a CSA. Sure. And hold on, in the distal uh, LAD, do we need to post, right? Yeah, yeah, good point. So this is a proximal LAD. The cross section is uh, 2.7. Get more. a three IVL ready, three IVL. Go back. So, oh shit, look this. Hold on, there's not that much calcium. And that's okay. Degree. Looks good. Yeah. Here, and this dial? is uh, like ah. a distal part of the uh, stent. Yeah, even the vessel size is like a 2.9. Yeah. So we can dilate with the 2.5 little higher pressure. We are not post dilated. Remember we deployed 2.75, dilated three a little proximally, not that area. Okay, now come proximal. Yeah. Uh, so then, yeah, you can the proximal edge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, proximal edge is like uh, yeah, on the plug, yeah, and uh, yeah, here, they do quite a bit. Here, yeah. at the rest their side is like kind of huge. Like uh, maybe we can post. Okay, three point nine is the EL to EL, and a diffuse plug. And you okay, know, okay, we'll, go back, go back, go back. You're like three calcium. quadrant. Yeah, here three quadrant calcium. Yeah, this is a, like tight test and a yeah. severe, severe yep. calcium part. Yep. So this is exactly where flush, the. Flush. Yeah, Stents right. were getting held up. Yeah, little bit there. Trouble, yes. Leave it. Okay. So now we are prepare that. Connect the IVL. They have to go Do and connect. Two five. No, three. Three of IVL. No, you have two five high pressure. Two point five balloon. Yeah. So meanwhile, we can dilate that area. Yeah, we can go 24 atmosphere in the mid to uh, I mean, distal LED aspect. This LED stent. You don't want to go 3 -0. No, 3 will be too much, right? Two point uh, distal vessel. 2.9. Yeah. 2.75. No. Yeah, 2.5 will not do two it. 2.75. Seven okay. Then 3 -0. Then we go 3 -0. 3 -0 moderate pressure. No, we have 3 -0 opened. So yeah. we'll go moderate pressure. Six. Yeah, yeah, give me. I will got ready so quick. Go. Samin, so, I mean, IVL use uh, continues to increase in your uh, center? Yeah, I mean, we do it about 40 uh, uh, cases per month. Okay, good. Go up. So, I, that I kind of, uh, you know, but this is coronary. They have some uh, representation in the peripheral also. Right. But Down. coronary 40. And now with the 120 pulses, so it's a good multi vessel you can do with the one device. Yeah. You want to distal edge? Make sure distal edge is covered. I think so. Yeah. No, you want to go okay. with the stand zoom? Boost, no, stand no, boost? No, 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 no. Eyes are good enough. Yeah. Go up. Yeah. Good. Ten. Good. Okay, get us the IVL. Yeah. Anu, what about, uh, could you have also dilated the proximal with the same balloon to facilitate the placement of IVL? 
Oh, you're in proximal area. No, no. I yeah. yeah. will go here. Yeah. Will so, go. Yeah, but you're right. If there would have been a tighter lesion, then it's the right approach because you don't want to struggle with IVL. But this case, in this one, will go. Now, only question is why? Does it matter if you created little dissections uh, for, the laser, for the energy, acoustic energy of the uh, IVL to deliver? Will it create more trouble? We don't know, but we know that majority of the time, even in that trial, disrupt CAD, 54% time they did a balloon angioplasty before. As you know, rota was contraindicated. So they use a cutting balloon or balloon angioplasty in more than half cases. In real life, that number is about 70%. They presented the data from uh, India, about 1,000 IVL cases. Greg Stone, uh, sorry, uh, Ashok Seth presented. And uh, there was pre-dilatation was in 75% of cases. So pre-dilatation is very common before IVL. But if you, in my opinion, if you think it can go, I think it should just go. Yeah, here, go up, go, Six, four. Why it is not a lot of air? If you... Who prepped it? Him. That's it. <laughs> okay, six. And go negative. Yeah, it will take a little time. It will come up. It will be okay. Yeah, okay, that's air, right? Yeah, but that's okay. Go now. No, no. Yes. You have to make sure that the yeah. balloon has a dog bone yeah. or some effect. Okay. Good. Weak. Okay. So we can go to four or six and then no, no, four. before, yeah, four is good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, this is the one. And then before deflating, you go to six atmosphere for a few seconds and then come down. Yeah. Okay. Now. Go a little bit in. Proximal edge uh, of the stent or just that, right? Go in a little bit. Yeah. Good, not too far. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Go up again. Yep. His key on yep. divers again after IVL? No. After the stand. Yeah, I can try. Huh? Yeah, I can see the uh, presence of the calcium fracture. Yeah. You want to see the calcium fracture, huh? No, yep. you want to see if this IVL okay. did anything. Okay, good. I have Negative. the divers ready. Yep. Okay. Just the way it is expanding, yeah. I think yeah. uh, the lesion will more. look much yeah. better. And do one go more. Up, yeah. yeah, go up. It's a waste of the energy now. Yeah, that's okay. Actually, right now, there are four companies are in process of having a new IVL catheter. One with a laser, one little bit of difference. Okay, go up. Six. Six and negative. Good. Okay. Okay. Okay, I was. Yep. Frank. Good. Okay, good. Yeah, we'll leave it on one side. I don't think we're going to need again, but we may. So we are doing the IVAS first before even we show on the angiogram. Look at that. What a confidence. <laughs> And one thing which we repeatedly have shown that there is minimal or no wire came back, uh, that perforation sometime could happen, but usually it's adventitial staining. The true frank perforation is not reported in any studies. Actually, uh, one or two have been, but those are after the stent placement. Probably okay. where the stent was IDL. expanded yeah. at too that, high. Uh... Yeah. No, that could be. That there is good. That's it. Oh, probably in more uh, uh, ex eccentric no, no, no. cases. Yeah. No, okay, it's coming. No. I think what happens is it is perforation happening, and then as soon as you place a stent, it is frank. It opens yeah, up. This is a distal part of the stent. But we have had a few balloon ruptures of the IVL, which cause some dye staining. You know, type A. Uh, okay. But or, or expansion now. Or yeah, same. Still, here is the eccentric. Still a lot of plug. Yeah. Outside, like eccentric plot. Yeah, we can't Loro, go more than that. Can't go more than that. Yeah. Where the there was part. a lesion there, yep. you know. Yeah. Now this is the bifurcation. Yeah, lumen getting bigger. 
That's made a big difference. Yep. Interesting. And now you're coming yep. to now the. This is a yeah. This is the legion now. Yep. So we show some three cuts. Five stand, right? Yeah, yeah, we can try. So few cuts. Yeah. Match bigger lumen. No. Yeah, yeah. cuts. Yeah, yeah. 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 Some clock. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, few yeah, cuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, some uh, yeah. custom flat. I, I okay. can see that. Nice eye wheel cuts. Okay, three point five sixteen. Yeah. I'm fifteen. Fifteen or eighteen? Eighteen probably. So hmm. would would it, uh, Samin, just uh, uh, respond no, no, to this on. query that, uh, yeah. uh, well, model picture. Anu model. just mentioned it. So what would be the, what are the considerations about, uh, let's say, if somebody wanted to uh, have another uh, run of the IVL at this point, based on what oh, you yeah. saw with... No, 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 no. No, but right now is good. You see that, go yes. back, Kiski, and show yeah. the pre and post IVL. That's the main reason yeah. we wanted to yeah. do the imaging sure. after. So Means this is a go the... back pre. Yeah, this yeah. is free. This is free. Yeah, this this is free. Okay, tight, stay yeah. there. Tight is part. Okay, you see that? Like, like to send the cost yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. Then I go uh, almost, to the... Almost uh, two, I mean, I would say two, two plus arc. Okay, yeah. good. Three. And go mm -hmm. back to the same view. Yeah. And yeah. then you show... Yeah. How? The break, fracturing yes, of the yeah. 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 Right. Once that is done, you should not go back. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. The, the, that, the I think, is the real... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you the, see the... that crack? Yeah, and then even the other better cracks are there a little bit. Yeah. Okay, Always the fracture is here, like between the calcium and the fibrous block, like some dissection. Mm -hmm. And in this case, even the, in the calcium, there's a fracture. Mm -hmm. So it's a good plug modification by good. IVL. Twenty. Uh, yeah, 23, 23, 23, yeah. 3.5, 23. He, uh, my, I, I was just saying 23. What does your, uh, I was uh, saying? Actually, from the uh, ostium of the LED to the edge of the stent is 20 by the uh, IVS. So 23 is like good overlap. Yeah, we need a little overlap. But from right? your side, is 20 millimeter or 18? From the uh, yeah, ostium of the LED is how the much? edge of the stent. How much it is? 20. 20 good, 23 good. Yeah. Because we have no other choice. It's not 18. <laughs> Uh, yeah, EYE IVAS, huh. it's called. Yeah. There's a new term, Samir, we use EYE IVAS. Yeah. I IVAS. <laughs> right. Well, you've been doing uh, EYE PCI <laughs> for years. <laughs> Decades, yeah. Absolutely. So the imaging should just complement, but people should train the eyes. Hmm. Yeah. And the hands in doing the procedure. So once it is deployed, we are going to go over discussion. Yes. So that we finish it in a reasonable time. It is okay for you. Good. Overlap, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, sound eye, yes, yes. I pull back, right? Mm. Let's overlap. Because in there. Oh. I have to overlap a little bit. Yeah, good. No, I have to overlap. No, a little bit it's overlap. No. It is overlap. No, a little bit. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's fine. One okay. cell. Ready? Yeah, go up. Go up. Okay, nice expansion. See that? Oh. So key is that once you're done and you're clicking crack the lesion uh, with the calcium wig nodule, then it's okay. I mean, not calcium arc, nodule, calcium arc. arc. We yeah. say the plate. Yeah. Calcium plate. Yeah. Okay. Final IVAS or do you think we are done? We yeah, enough. Yes, enough. Enough, enough. Yeah. No, Kiski will want IVAS. Yeah. For the... <laughs> right, Kiski? Yeah. Good. Okay, Good. we'll do a two, quick two IVAS. Two atmosphere. You can start two, your lecture. Four, four atmosphere, the, yeah. The, the no, they want completion. to see the picture. For completion, we'll yeah. do it. Picture. No Get ready, do. Frank? Good. Good. Negative. So just do one picture here and then you do your thing. Actually, we can do IVAS and be done. Yeah. If IVAS Take looks a good, you don't need a picture. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Sine. Go. Beautiful. Nice. Yes. Pristine. All right. Pristine. The good. Of art. So they're going to do IVAS and we'll show that later. And let's go to our presentation now. Okay, uh, can we go to the slides? Okay, yeah, this is the circ we did. And uh, 
So this plant, we did it, uh, LED diagonal, we'd, uh, it was uh, appropriate by every means. And uh, today we are going to talk, uh, actually very interesting, TCT had a more structural trials than the international trials, coronary intervention, unbelievable. Uh, while they have a separate TVT registry meeting, TVT meeting in, uh, in uh, uh, June, but there are more structural trials were presented and of course the, the big watch for the uh, for the tower uh, aortic valve replacement uh, both uh, uh, as well as for uh, aortic regurgitation so i'm going to go through some of the data now uh, the four trials i'm presenting now and maybe three or four present next month including the trial will be presented in aha very big trial we are waiting is orbit at two for a stable cad and that is a late breaking trial will be presented on uh, uh, I think on November 11th uh, or so, uh, which will be a big, big for us interventional cardiology guideline changing trial. So I will talk about agent IDE, uh, serolumus versus paclitaxel coated balloon from the China, TPAS trial and rota cut. And focus review is outcome of FFR negative high risk plaques. Because we know even FFR negative have a event. Not that they're immune, we'd leave those lesions, but they still have event, and particularly patients when we see it with a myocardial infarction, uh, with a multi-vessel disease. So let's go through the, our trials of the TCT. The major trial, I would say, for coronary, the top trial which was presented is agent IDE. We are waiting quite a bit, is the Boston Scientific trial of the paclitaxel coated, um, uh, uh, coated balloon, which is agent compared to conventional balloon angioplasty for ISR. Uh, this was the trial of 2 to 1 randomization, classical ISR with the less than two layers, either DES or BMS, uh, and uh, patients were followed, uh, and 321 versus 159. And uh, in the balloon angioplasty group, if you could not get the good results, you, could, uh, you are allowed to put a stent. Uh, and overall success rate and things are shown here. Yes, uh, the agent drug-coated balloon had took little extra time, but there was nothing else so, uh, in terms of a difference. Uh, but what is the major, major uh, results? TLR and target vessel MI, significantly lower, almost half. See the hazard ratio 0.49 and 0.5 respectively, that 50% event rate of uh, in the agent drug-coated balloon compared to balloon angioplasty group. Tremendous data, tremendous data we were waiting quite a bit. And more important, which I always showed, that drug-coated balloon will not have stent thrombosis because there's no stent. And exactly we saw. Zero, zero stent thrombosis compared to 3.9 in the balloon angioplasty group. Now, I'm unfortunately, I cannot say for sure because it is not in the presentation and it has not been published that how many patients in the balloon angioplasty group got the stent uh, and how many were the bailout stent done in the agent group. So I was told in the agent is like one or two percent. But balloon angioplasty in the data in the other trial has what been happened? between 25 to 30 percent. But I can tell you, I do not know because it was not shown. And we went to the presentation again this morning, not shown that how many had a stent in the balloon angioplasty group in the agent IDE trial. As you know, with the serolimus coated, we are the first one uh, to do in America uh, with the solution DCB trial and uh, for the uh, ISR and then about uh, three weeks ago for the native vessel which is 900 plus patient trial uh, comparing drug coated balloon versus balloon angioplasty slash stenting uh, in native vessel. So that has trial started and I had done three cases and that also being the first one. So just to say very positive in every aspect of the MI, TVR, of course, no difference in death and stent thrombosis as shown here. Very interesting. So this is this very likely will be available to us, approved by first quarter of next year. Only question will remain, what will be the price for this? How much price you have to pay unless there is a respect appropriate reimbursement? So, but, the, but it's a very positive. Second was, you remember in drug coating point of view, serolumus in the early DES trial has been superior to paclitaxel in terms of decreasing re stenosis, decreasing late loss. And this is a trial from 16 center in China with a sequent uh, drug coated balloon, either serolumus or paclitaxel. The concentration shown there, the excipient where it is slowly released is a BHT versus lopramide and uh, it was presented uh, also uh, as a, uh, the late breaking trial of uh, PCB of 128 patient and 130 of the serolumus coated balloon and whole plan was that what will be the lumen late loss and you see 
in segment late loss remain identical between two groups other parameters are shown were identical but more importantly we were hoping the sirolimus will give rise to less intimal hyperplasia which has shown in the earlier studies of the drug coated balloon i mean drug coated stents but we did not see that in the drug coated balloon as you see here particularly in this group accumulated the, the distribution curve as you can see our identical fully overlapped individual endpoints were no difference and uh, so we still need to see that what will happen uh, the tlf or patient oriented uh, composite endpoint were not different so this is still need to be i would say they probably had to come up with a better combination if really has to translate into a better or maybe equal i can tell you agent the ide trial showed such a effective uh, therapy for the drug coat of the coated balloon for isr so as long as it's equally effective i think it will be good enough and that's what we are evaluating the sirolimus coated uh, drug coated balloon then the t pass trial was what if you do a dap less than one month but in face of ticagrelor remember we have that uh, adapt uh, you know we have uh, other trials which have seen uh, stop the aspirin at the time zero and those actually have been uh, that some but what if you continue ticagrelor and give antiplatelet therapy i mean aspirin for less than one month compared to the dapt this was a randomized trial you can see a uh, ticagrelor monotherapy dapt for less than one month it was given every 16 days so about two weeks aspirin was stopped ticagrelor monotherapy versus continue both and basically a, a, a usual follow up 12 month clinical outcome that one month gap in terms of cumulative in the, uh, of the incidence of the outcomes which clearly is significantly lower which include the major bleeding also death mi revascularization major bleeding and difference was not only one month even landmark analysis further so uh, and uh, death mi stent thrombosis stroke exactly identical difference was because of the lower bleeding so initial the previous data which i showed is all driven by this difference of double the difference or 50% reduction was because of the lower bleeding as you can see here 3.4 versus 1.2% in the 16 day uh, dapt uh, these are the shown here as of 16 days so overall very effective strategy these were the patients with acute coronary syndrome but more importantly that in these cases they were simple cases they were not complex simple cases and it was stopped at 16 days not at time zero so it was truly a uh, modified uh, dapt uh, and so and supposed to be effective now of course many other trials are looking into this aspect uh, that what can we do the whole goal is how can we decrease bleeding and this should see it tells you that two weeks is fine maybe that will decrease your bleeding and maybe that's a strategy uh, because nobody has done less than two months and uh, less than one month and uh, effective uh, then the then the trial we presented from here rota cut uh, which is the rotational threctomy combined with cutting balloon to optimize stent expansion in calcific lesion concept was that use a rotation threctomy of course but in a severely moderate to severely calcific lesion use a cutting balloon probably will give you better stent expansion with a better M msa compared to the non compliant balloon which we usually do and it was a i was driven uh, trial and you see that multiple these are the two uh, rota pro and cutting balloon were used in this trial and uh, typical of uh, long calcific lesions and uh, real angulated uh, lesions were excluded uh, this was 60 center one to one randomization 29 patients got the cutting balloon and 31 uh, patient got the non compliant balloon and uh, primary endpoint was the minimum stent area at the end of the procedure which was blinded to the operator and of, of the 60 cases we did 45 15 cases done by st francis hospital so this is basically you see the multiple ivas runs the pre post cutting balloon after rotation threctomy then final ivas and the as i mentioned the last final ivas was uh, blinded to the operator so overall a uh, complex very long lesions look at the 31 to 33 mm reference vessel is 3 mm and uh, angulations were less than 45 which is true minimum lumen diameter was 1 so average is re starting the restenosis stenosis was about 75% and calcium severe calcium in 3/4 and 1/4 was moderate calcium as you can see there uh, and bar to artery ratio 1.6 in both the groups and of course there was slightly uh, not individual differences in terms of uh, procedure except the what difference was balloon length and 
maximum balloon pressure. We all know with a cutting balloon, because of the product label, we could not go more than 12. You saw it, we usually go 20 atmosphere all the time. But in the trial, we could not go more than 12 and 16 atmosphere in the non-compliant balloon angio. That basically was the difference and more frequent inflation, uh, but otherwise uh, no significant difference in technique point of view. Uh, and uh, post stent uh, treatment dilatation was little more in the after putting a stent then post dilated little more in the cutting balloon versus the non compliant balloon so primary endpoint was the minimum stent area msa was identical 6.7 versus 6.9 p value of 0.68 no difference median 6.5 versus 6.9 no difference so basically the trial did not meet the primary endpoint that cutting balloon with a rotablation gives you better lumen compared to non-compliant balloon. So this is, we did it, and I can say we did best possible. There are other, some, some parameters were a little better for the rota cutting balloon group, that is stent expansion, which is defined as more than 80% of the proximal and distal, which more than 80% is good, and it was much better in the rota cutting balloon group, and stent expansion uh, mean was much better in the cutting balloon, or trended towards better compared to the non-compliant uh, balloon angioplasty but the primary endpoint was not different. Also, we saw more calcium fracture in the cutting balloon group compared to non-compliant group. Uh, now, uh, acute lumen gain was identical. Others was also very important. Any complication, you uh, talk about these cases. Type C lesion, I mean, it's actually lesion because of the length. Type C lesion, uh, severe calcium in 75% of cases. Look at the complication of the timmy flow, slow flow, no <laughs> reflow, side branch, unheard. 60 patients, excellent results. There were little dissection which happens, but nothing in the end. This was during the procedure, little staining, but absolutely no, no complication. We saw, uh, you can see it here. Uh, as far as the other 30-day uh, endpoints, in terms of the MI, death, and all this, you can see uh, nothing except one patient required TVR in the cutting balloon group, and there were two myocardial infarction, I mean, total three, two and one, respectively, no difference. Other complications were not there. One case, we could not get the cutting balloon, so it was uh, as per pro a treated population was counted in the rota group, absolutely no difference in event rate. So 30-day maze. We had to present the 19, uh, sorry, nine-month data later, but to me, looks like just to say excellent results and almost no complication in these complex cases. So yes, so primary endpoint was not met, for the minimum stent area, but there was some uh, some benefit of the stent expansion of the calcium fracture, whether it will lead to, in a large study, uh, some better benefit need to be seen. So this was actually simultaneous publication of the Euro intervention. So this was our nice uh, central figure, which I have put it here. So now the second point of our focus review is the outcome of the FFR negative high-risk plaque. The why some FFR negative patients do get event. And this is nothing new. I want to take you to the first one on the top left. Remember the FAME 2 trial was FFR less than 0.8, PCI versus medical therapy. Those were the two top curves. Clearly, PCI was superior. Uh, and you see the event rate. And now we have the five-year follow-up on the right side. So key was piece of the tra trial was aborted in six months because the event rate was 13% in the medical therapy and it was 4% in the PCI group. But see below that. It was the registry. And what was the registry? Registry was FFR was more than 0.8 and the lesions were left. Nothing to be done for them except medical therapy. And you can see there, beginning there was no event. After five, six months, they started getting 2-3% event rate. So we look at that at one year, the PCI group and the medical and the FFR negative group had about 4 to 5% event rate. So just to say, was not zero. Now, we know that once your FFR is positive, your PCI did a better job of decreasing the half event rate as shown in the figures on the right side, big, largely driven by the lowering urgent revascularization. So this fact is known. But now what is not known, that if you take those patients of the registry, and this is the follow-up, look at the five-year. The registry patient, five-year in the FAME 2 trial had an event rate of 16%, just like what happened in the stent group, primary. So just to say, FFR negative is not immune uh, to no event in the, uh, in the future. So there has been a lot of work being done. What are these lesions? What can we identify? There are shear stress has been published by Narula and another team. Uh, but uh, the, to answer that, there was a trial called combined uh, FFR OCT, combined uh, 
uh, trial, which basically took patient diabetic, FFR more than 0.8, and they divided patient based on the OCT finding of the TICFA negative, TICFA positive. And you can see on the right side, 5% higher, four times higher event rate in the TICFA positive versus TICFA negative. This basically means that if you're thin cap, even your FFR negative, at one year, your event rate was 13%. And this goes back with the same thing which we show in the FAME2 trial. Event rate was 16%. So just to say that even FFR negative lesion can have a trouble. And this basically was answered by this large study done from Netherlands that fractional flow reserve, negative high-risk plaque, and clinical outcome after myocardial infarction called Pactus OBS trial. Now, what was it? It basically, they took the patient, intermediate lesion 40 to 70%. FFR was more than 0.8. And they did the OCT. And if OCT uh, patient was divided based on the high-risk plaque versus without high-risk plaque. So of the FFR more than 0.8, 34%, one-third had the high-risk plaque. And what were the plaque features? Two of the three needed. Lipid arc more than 90 degree, minimum fibrous cap thickness of less than 65, or presence of either plaque rupture or thrombus. So three features, two of the three has to be there to call it a high-risk plaque. If you have only one, you will be in the without high-risk plaque category. And uh, what did they find? And this is the example, one on the A, that there is a the lipid arc, uh, clearly, the 297 and fibrous cap thickness is 50, 50, 42 at various areas, very thin type. Compared to the right side, the cap is thick, and lipid arc is 225. So clearly, these are the cases they de decided based on that individual endpoints, uh, individual baseline characteristics are shown here. Most of these cases have a median of FFR of 0 0.9. See that it's not 0 0.8 or 2. Majority of them are 0 0.9, as you can see from the distribution of the FFR. And also, what was they found in the high-risk plaque? Majority, almost everybody has a lipid arc of more than 90. The end, the fibrous cap thickness was 0 0.061, and uh, cap thickness, TICFA, which we call, was 88% and 0% in the high risk plaque. As you can see, plaque rupture, 29, thrombus in 22% of cases, as shown in this with the neovascularization. So, with that, one third, 34% having a uh, high risk plaque, these were the event. Uh, at follow-up. Look at that. 15% in the high-risk group, FFR negative in two years, and uh, half uh, in the non-high-risk plaque, including the we have individual endpoint of death, MI, and unplanned revascularization. Basically driven by unplanned revascularization. These are the overall endpoint of the trial. And uh, also we say, well, maybe it was the FFR which really led to subsequent event. No. See the answer in the lower. High-risk plaque. FFR was identical 0.9 in both the cases and so both the groups. So these are the other points that MLA uh, and uh, it's basically with the high risk plaque was the biggest determinant uh, of uh, the individual endpoints. They would have a model one and model two uh, in taking all the factors of the clinical which were different between two groups, but high risk plaque was the highest about two times hazard ratio of event rate. So high risk plaque in FFR negative patient is a two times. We saw that in the diabetic patient in the OCT, October OCT trial that uh, in, uh, it was four times. So they basically was among patients with MI and FFR negative non-culprit lesions, the presence of a high-risk plaque is associated with the worst clinical outcome, which is mainly driven by a higher number of unplanned revascularization in a population with a high recurrent event rate despite physiologically guided complete revascularization. These results call for research on additional pharmacological or focal treatment strategy in patients harboring high-risk plaque. And just to answer this, this field is so big. There are four randomized trials going on at present, prevent, Interclima, combined intervene and vulnerable. Combined, the, which I showed you the combined trial in the diabetic patient, they are now, they're intervening on those TICFA patients uh, and show and same vulnerable, uh, all OCT guided to see whether you can identify these patients and prevent the event. Although uh, doing a stent still remain the research. So let's uh, come to our uh, final conclusions, take home message and uh, which called central figure. Pactitaxel coated drug looting balloon versus balloon angioplasty for ISR, three thumbs up. Within there, serolimus versus Pactitaxel looting balloon, no difference. Then uh, one month DAPT followed by Ticagrelor or DAPT for one year. One thumb up, uh, still we need some more data. Cutting balloon versus non-compliant balloon after RA for increase in MSA on IVAS, no difference, so the one thumbs down. Then uh, even FFR negative lesions, especially after MI, 
because they have vulnerability. A lot of vulnerable plaques uh, are associated with high rate of MACE at follow-up and may be explained on basis of high-risk plaque feature. High-risk plaques, even in the FFR negative lesions, are associated with higher MACE two times versus no high-risk features, mainly driven by unplanned revascularization. These patients should undergo aggressive additional pharmacological therapy. PCSK was present, was used in 1% of these cases uh, in, the, in, the, in the current trial. Uh, and PCSK9 inhibitor, anti-inflammatory. Now, particularly colchicin. Colchicin is being used as anti-inflammatory or as an antiplatelet therapy I showed last time. Or even a focal stenting strategy, but that's a research aspect, the trials which I showed you. So with that note, we'll just come to our four, uh, three questions. Following statement is false regarding the final results of the agent ID trial comparing paclitaxel coated drug eluting balloon versus BA, balloon angioplasty for treatment of ISR. Which one is false? Lower MI in DEB group, lower TVR in DEB group, no difference in stent thrombosis between two groups, lower TLF in DEB group versus BA, similar death rates between the two groups. So question was, the C is wrong answer. There is a lower stent thrombosis in the DEB versus the balloon angioplasty group. Second question, following statement is true regarding the findings of the rota cut trial comparing cutting balloon versus non-compliant balloon post RA, except similar mace between two groups, similar S, MSA between two groups tend towards better stent expense in cutting balloon versus non-compliant balloon, similar acute gain between two groups, similar calcium fracture between two groups and answer is, which is the true is E. Uh, basically, that uh, the, the calcium fracture was higher uh, in the cutting balloon group. Yeah. So then lastly, following statement is false regarding the results of the Pactus OPS study evaluating the outcome of FFR negative high-risk plaque versus non-high-risk plaque. High-risk plaque is present in about one-third. Tukfa, uh, is most common in, is the most common high risk feature. High risk plaque is associated with higher mace rate. High risk plaque is associated with a higher unplanned revascularization rate, and high risk plaque trend towards higher MI rates. <coughs> and answer there is TICFA was the not most common. It was the lipid arc in this trial, so that was the uh, false. With that note, we complete our uh, didactic discussion and that beautiful demonstration of the bifurcation a case uh, which required three stent strategy. Samin, great uh, discussion. Uh, anu, excellent case. Uh, uh, Samin, to me, uh, the real question, which of course you kind of mentioned, uh, is that really for a subset of patients, whether they are the FFR negative or otherwise, the real question is, could imaging be superior to physiology? And that, I think, uh, requires uh, uh, much consideration, uh, uh, probably a burgeoning uh, role of identifying TICFA with OCT. Uh, anu, you had some comments I can see? No, the total contrast use was 150 and uh, air karma of 1.6 in this uh, case. And, and, uh, uh, and then uh, just the real to... answer will be the yellow trial. Yeah, no, but genetic right. analysis is going to happen. Yeah, now coming back to, we have the trial forja. For the trial, basically, that uh, you know, th there are trials have been done that comparing IVAS versus FFR guided intervention, and there was no difference in the outcomes. Right. And exactly. the human, anything you want to show here? Hmm? But I think it's, it has to be OCT what? guided. It has to be the OCT right. guided uh, intervention. You want to show last IVAS picture or? That's good. No. Yeah, okay. the, okay. All right, we are done with yes, that. Okay. So MNA became 6.4. Yep. Excellent case. Here is the slide. Uh, uh, Samin, you want to mention anything yeah. about this uh, conference coming up? Yeah. So the, it's a New York uh, transcatheter valve uh, is a focused evidence-based approach and live seven cases will be done. This time will be at Mount Sinai Stern Auditorium. We have a great faculty and uh, course directors have changed a little bit. Uh, myself and David Adams, more of advisory and uh, basically the uh, directors being uh, Tang, Kini, Sail Khera and Larakas and uh, course co-directors Dangas, Greg Stone, Amit Huda, Parushram and Lucy Safi. So whole purpose is there is that also just to show where we are in terms of the structure we have made superiority in entire uh, New York, if not in the USA, for the coronary intervention, yes, but structural, we are going up, and uh, this uh, these kind of conferences really brings, uh, um, I would say, recognition in the local community, and I know, I always say that our, we broke off from the whole routine of the New York City, uh, uh, once I started doing the complex coronary intervention uh, with the conference, the symposium in, uh, in 1999, 1990, 1998 uh, first, 
and uh, and then of course in the ccc live has really made a big difference so this will be uh, very we are very happy to invite everyone and uh, will be a, uh, we have uh, outside faculty there are 14 faculty from outside uh, and uh, nationally and internationally will give the update uh, on the transcatheter valve and valve approach will include uh, particularly the tower uh, various stages now now there is a restenosis of the tower so tav in tau and of course, TAV in surgery, uh, SAVR, TAV in SAVR, or TAV in um, uh, the, any type of uh, surgical valve, the routine tower will be shown also with the bicuspid uh, aortic valve. Then we'll show the mitral clip. So we are not ready for the tricuspid yet because tricuspid has not been approved, but very solid data. The triluminate uh, has gone to FDA. It is expected the first tricuspid device, which is the tri clip, will be approved by first quarter of next year. Uh, and uh, hopefully with the next year, we'll do a live tricuspid uh, valve case. Then the left atrial appendage, although we, we're still making our room into it uh, name, but uh, we are not going to show that. So we are going to show the four transcatheter tower valve, one mitral clip, then we'll show one TMVR, uh, which is also emerging entity. Uh, and one case will be the alcohol septal ablation. That's how we have planned seven cases uh, for this one day, uh, besides various lectures and debate and discussion and case presentation. So we'll have a fellows present five cases, five fellows will select, and uh, then the faculty decide the best uh, first and second, and they get a special prize. And very excited for this. Looks a very exciting symposium. Good luck for it. Uh, before we close, I want to thank a few uh, people who have, I have not noticed them before. Uh, Hugo Estrada and Felipe Santana. Uh, don't know where you are uh, uh, contacting us, but thank you for joining us. Uh, uh, Anu Samin, uh, congratulations. Great case. We end here and we'll see you on December the 19th. Thank you.